Hello and a very warm autumnal welcome back to the channel of Motorbike Nonsense. This week's bike is the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT Plus. It's a bike that doesn't really care where it sits on the graph of price versus power because it's only got 120 horsepower, but it costs 15 grand. And the reason is because Yamaha has tried to make this as complete a motorbike as possible, which means it's got high tech stuff on it that I've not seen on any other motorbike. So we're going to have a quick look, take it for a ride and find out if it's worth the cash. So what makes this worth 15 grand? Bearing in mind that's nearly two grand more than a Tracer 9 GT and quite a bit more than a Bogo Tracer 9. Well, the first thing really is the electronic suspension. It's got electrically adjustable damping and all that sort of stuff that you can't see in there. It has got a radar on the front. Let's get around there, show you its schnoz. And that radar is cleverer than most other radars. Now we've seen radar crews on things like the Multistrada V4, the KTM 1290 Super Adventure S, but this does lots and lots of stuff. It feeds into the adaptive cruise control as you'd expect, so you can cruise a set distance from the car in front, but it also feeds into the suspension system. And that has really blown my mind ever so slightly. So when it slows down, it will use the engine braking first and then the physical brakes, which is pretty normal to be honest, but it will stiffen up the damping in the fork when it's slowing down. So it doesn't dive as much as you would think. And if it thinks you aren't slowing down fast enough when you use the normal brakes, just in normal riding, it will actually assist you with the braking. So you go along, you're pulling the brake, there's a car, the radar knows you're not gonna stop in time, so it adds a bit more braking. So it's got a linked braking system, but it is sort of controlled by the computer and it does just work. It doesn't get in the way, doesn't annoy you, doesn't cause any sort of uh, false positives or it hasn't in my testing. But yeah, that is the big deal about this bike. The next big deal, frankly, is the dashboards. So let's have a look at that. Now, if you've seen any other version of the Tracer line, you know that it usually has a twin screen dash. So it looks like a Star Wars Cantina monster looking at you. This does away with that for a seven inch color TFT. And I think it looks really premium, really posh. And it's nice and anti glary as well. Now you can do the usual stuff like switching between your riding modes over here. So you've got your rain, your street, your sport, and then your custom. And you can adjust that by using this joystick down here, which for me is a little bit closely indicator. And it took me a little while to get used to where the indicator is and where that is, but maybe I'm just a dimwit. And then you go to your machine settings and then to YRC and you can adjustize your custom mode. So power, traction control, slide control, lift control and suspension. And it actually does spell it out up here on like my MT-10 where you have to look at the manual to work out what the acronyms mean. But otherwise I really like the dashboard. It's really simple to read and you've got your usual trip function and stuff as well. So you can see I've been averaging 58 mpg. Now let's talk quickly about the Trace 9 GT Plus's looks. You've got LED headlights and you've got cornering lights as well here which light up with extra leanage. I think it's about seven degrees of lean. You've got Yamaha standard brakes which feel actually okay on this. One thing this bike hasn't got on it at the moment but which is standard are the 30 litre panniers. It is again just lovely that Yamaha is giving you this stuff for the price. So 15 grand might seem a bit a bit tasty for an 890cc bike, but it comes with all the stuff that you'd really want. And you can add a 50 litre top box for 500 quid extra. That is about the only optional extra you'll really need given you've got heated grips and everything else. Now we should talk about the Tracer 9's engine because it's pretty iconic now, I'd say, the CP9 engines. 890cc triple, 119 horsepower, 93 newton meters of torque, and it drinks from a just under 19 litre fuel tank for a range of about 230 miles. Um, and yeah, this is quite an approachable bike, as he says, stepping in some stinging nettles. It's got an 820mm seat height in the lowest position, it's about 32 inches, or 835mm if you pop it up. It weighs 223 kilograms wet minus the panniers and it comes on Bridgestone T32 tires. So yes, it's got more technology than a robot brothel, but what's it actually like to ride? Well, let's just get to it. All right, let's take the Trace 9 GT Plus for a beautiful autumn afternoon ride. What's meant to be summer, but frankly, it doesn't feel very summery. Anyway, climbing aboard is super easy. I'm six foot three, so it's gonna be easy. But I think even if you're a short ass, the seat height on this is quite approachable. And it's quite a wide seat. It's a little bit firm. And I would go for the comfort seat that's on the options pack, but it's 430 pounds. It is heated, but that's very expensive. But anyway, let's fire up and get going. Yeah, the riding position on this bike is super relaxed and super friendly. I feel like I'm, a, I don't know, squatting 
on a stool in one of those old person walk-in toilets filled with golden syrup because it's a very smooth experience the quick shifter is worthy of a mention because Yamaha has done something that no one else has really done so far as I'm aware they've made the quick shifter work on things like off throttle upshifts and on throttle downshifts which normally you can't do with a quick shift or at least not very easily so yeah I don't know if you are on a motorway slip road say you're on the throttle or on a downshift for a second just go straight in even though I'm on the throttle which is pretty cool it isn't always seamless though but I have had some pretty clunky shifts that made me wonder if it was working but they are pretty few and far between now the engine the engine is 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 a stonker i believe they say in the business whatever business that might be it is soulful because it's a triple it's just got a lovely growl that's reminiscent of that um that supposedly british brand that makes its bikes in thailand now i don't care about that but whatever it sounds good and it goes really well you kind of think ah oh, you know it's a middleweight and it's it's got 900 cc's man it's got a decent amount of torque it obviously works best when you get close to that 10,500 rpm red line and we'll do some uh, sporty riding in a little bit but yeah the mirrors they're better than the ones on say my mt 10 sp because they stick out a bit further so i'm not just getting elbows and they stay nice and clear as well so yeah anyway, i'm gonna get some uh, motorways to talk about refinement there because the screen is a little bit noisy despite being adjustable and despite the fact it's been improved and then we'll do some twisty roads i hope it doesn't rain because it's not stopped for months and it's miserable and i'm just gonna grow gills and go back into the sea like some kind of pissed off placostomus that's one of those uh, fish that sucks the green stuff off the side of your fish tank i think <laughs> Yeah, it's fast as well, but we'll get to that. Okie dokie, we're coming up to some 70 mile an hour stuff now. I'm in a custom riding mode, just in case you're wondering what my setup is. It's most aggressive everything, apart from the suspension is in A2, which I think is the comfiest mode. But anyway, let's give it full beans. Temporary road surface, maybe not. <laughs> the front goes light in third gear and second gear as well. You can easily get it up in first. Quite an entertaining engine this, but anyway, Let's talk about motorway manners um, on possibly the most disgusting, not quite fully resurfaced bit of road in Surrey. It's uh, it's okay. I don't really love the screen. I get a bit too much noise. I don't know if you can actually hear me. It's not buffety. It's okay. I think it's one of the better ones I've used on a bike. But it's still just hitting the top of my head and making a bit of noise. I'm six foot three, and if I put it down, it's much worse. <laughs> But yeah, let's talk about the radar cruise. Annoyingly, I haven't got any cars around me that I could really demonstrate it on. But the good thing is, it's just very easy to set and you adjust your distance using what would normally be your headlight flasher, where your index finger is, that little trigger there. And then you just sit back and comfortably let the bike look after you. And it's also quite good, because look, I can use the quick shifter, he says. Hang on. I can use the quick shifter and clutch without interrupting it. So you can change gear without having to reactivate the cruise control. It's a comfortable bike for me to do long distances on. I've actually got the seat in the lower setting because I've not bothered changing it. But even at 6 to 3, I'm not cramped at all. And I could happily crank out long miles to the Alps or wherever on this without getting backache or bum ache. It's decent. But that's not as interesting as what this thing can do on a country road. So let's do that. Obviously, as with any bike with cruise control as well, you can push the throttle away to cancel it or tap the brakes. Front or rear? But yeah, because it's got a 17-inch front wheel, it just feels really sporty. And the, the, the limit of grip is in my brain. Oh! <laughs> Genuinely one of the best engines on the market right now. I need to behave and get to the country roads. Now we're still not actually at the country road, but look, I've got radar cruise control on under 50 limit. I've got it set to plus or minus 50 miles an hour. These cars aren't doing 50 and it's just holding me the same distance away from them. And look, as we go around here, they're gonna break. The bike slowed down a little bit. Now this is all tied in to the six axis IMU on this bike. So the bike knows if it's leaned over and it won't make dramatic speed changes while you're leant over, unless I guess 
absolutely necessary and you obviously do need to be keeping an eye out changing gears if needed and stay in control of the machine it's not self-driving but it does just in my experience on long rides long motorway rides having owned a bike for radar cruise before it just makes you a little bit less exhausted at the end of a long day riding it takes some of the effort out of it but anyway that's boring let's go and do some twisties god what a beautiful afternoon look at that it's not the most comfortable bike to stand up on, to be honest, the tank juts into my legs. But anyway, let's go and do some twisties. Interesting, quick shift, <laughs> had a bit of a shift at then. <laughs> yeah, on a country road, this thing handles really, really sportily. It's got a 17-inch front wheel, it's got proper, decent tyres on it, those Bridgestones. And obviously with nice wide bars, it's <laughs> super agile. Now, I have got this in the softest suspension mode. I'm just going to switch to sport mode now to put it into the stiffer mode. Oh yeah, that's better. It's a little bit less wallowy, or it's a lot less wallowy. But that's the nice thing about the suspension on this. There is a big difference between the soft mode and the firmer mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this just does just feel like that old cliche of a sports bike on stilts. The induction noise is brilliant. The one thing I would say is the brakes, they're slightly typical Yamaha in that they work well, they work really well actually on this, but the lever feels a little bit like you're just, I don't know, trying to squeeze an avocado that's not quite ripe yet. But yeah, I got it, just, just eggs you on, it handles really nicely. And then you've got that engine and quick shifter which all works together most of the time really, really well. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a soft tour of this, but it isn't so hard edged it's gonna get on your nerves either. I think the closest thing to this that I've ridden recently would be, hate to mention it, that KTM 890 SMT, which is admittedly two and a half grand less than this. It also feels a lot cheaper. But this has got kind of <laughs> almost as much lunatic character but a whole lot more premium finish and a whole lot more tech and everything else but that KTM is possibly a little bit dartier in terms of the chassis geo so if you really want a bike like this that's perhaps more for short blasts getting your knee down I'd get the KTM but for everything else I would say this is really good one criticism I've just found this black plastic here has been scratched already by my key fob so yeah this this black plastic is nice and textured but it has got some scuffs on it already this is easy to use though oh noise less noise right to quickly sum up my thoughts on the yamaha tracer 9 gt plus it's a really really good bike for 15 grand it might not be the cheapest middleweight sports tourer type thing out there but it feels well finished it's got loads of tech the tech that is there works kind of flawlessly in my opinion and i think it's quite a cool looking thing and like most kind of higher spec Yamahas. It feels pretty posh as well. The paint finish is good. The fasteners look good. The only real letdown for me is slightly the brakes. Only a minor winch. They're not as bad as on some of the other Yamahas I've ridden, but it's just a bit dead at the lever. But you can properly hoon this thing. It handles really sharply. The engine is soulful and has character and can entertain you as well. It's punchy. It howls. It will do this. It's comfortable. And it's kind of got all the kit you would ever want other than the top box which is on the options list for 500 quid. So yeah, well done Yamaha. Well done for being brave enough to make a reasonably expensive middleweight bike and just saying, hey, it does come with everything you need and some stuff that you've never thought about. So it gets nine Tim Rodies out of 10. It's a cool thing. And I'd probably buy one if I hadn't just bought an MT-10 SP. But anyway, hit the like button if you've liked this video. Go down to the comments, leave me the Japanese word for anti-dive and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.